Hello to all. I am Mar Introini, Global Chair of Global Networking. And today is a very, very special day for us. Not only for Global Networking Win uh, within G100, but also for G100 Win in Ownerness and Wisdom. We have started this edition 2022 on domestic violence. And yes, we are very happy. Because on domestic violence, there is a hope. There is color beyond that wall. Behind that wall, there is more than could you ever imagine. And we are not talking about public policies. We are not talking about transforming the society. Here, we are humble, but very ambitious of what, at personal level, each woman could do on a desesperated situation. 80% of the situation on violence is of the aggression. The aggressor is the one that leads that situation. But there is a 20%, and we strongly believe that that 20% is exclusively about you, about your spirituality, not losing your spirituality, your senses to move forward, your strength, your psychologically and emotional strength. And that's why we are here, to connect, to exchange, and learn. We are aware that it's a very absolutely terrible situation. But this is what we could do, and that is hope. And why I am so certain about that? Because all the women that will be with us every month in this Break the Wall, are, most of them have lived or have been witnesses of situation of violence, and they know how to do it, how they make it to move forward. And not just because they are experts in a panel, they became experts after they, they see, they discover what there is beyond that wall. So I am so happy because there are women from all over the world. We are here from Europe, from India, from Africa, from US, and from Latin America. All of them, different cultures, different religions, and all of them share their stories, their stories of personal resilience. And that is the message that we would like to leave. So we are going to smile because this is beyond tragedy. And we are going to smile because there is hope. There is a door that will open and you will see a little light. And here we are for that. And for that is Dr. Anita Caprice from USA, Global Chair from Owners and Wisdom that is with us. Another year, Anita, with us. We continue with it, it, it against all odds, isn't it? We continue here breaking that wall. Uh, I'll give you the floor, yeah, just in a minute. I'm Virginia Rivera, Executive Director for Global Networking. She's based in Puerto Rico. Uh, and also, she will be joining us as co host for this beautiful and strong woman. And don't think that it's only because you are strong. No is the way that you will be going to discover that you are a strong, a stronger than you will ever imagine. Virginia, how are you? Thank you so much, Mart. And I, we're so excited to start 2022 this way and connecting with these amazing women that you're going to be meeting one by one. And Dr. Anita is going to be leading us through to meet each world. Each world, each woman represents a different world. And there's something that Maya Angelou said and I love, um, I love her and I studied her. My mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive and to do so with some passion, with some compassion, some humor and some style. Terrible things can happen. It's no, no abuse is nobody's fault. Nobody should go through it, but it is an experience in our life and it's how we see it and how we as individuals can start coping, but most importantly, thriving. Thriving is not to be a winner immediately. Thriving is really getting to know and acknowledging who you are. So I think that today is going to be a wonderful beginning of a year where we break that wall. And that's exactly, and you know, sometimes the wall, the hardest wall is the one that we build ourselves with things that have happened. So we need to break that wall and we're not doing it alone. We're doing it hand in hand. Thank you so much, Dr. Anita. So I pass it on to you and I'll be bringing in our incredible women today. Thank you so much, Vibrant 
Virginia and Marvelous Mar. I am so happy to be here. Absolutely. Yes, the, biz the, the business of domestic violence is the global business of all. And I want to share some I want to introduce some powerhouse women in the house here this morning, this afternoon, this evening. We have delightful Deborah, Michigan Chair, USA. We have sensational Sonia of India. She's with the Indian country, Oneness and Wisdom. We have the enchanting Anolia from Angola. And we have the delightful Davina, Country Chair, Oneness and Wisdom, USA. Thank you, ladies. Oh. <laughs> so excited to have you. Um, so we, when we had our meeting prior, because this is a, I want you all to know that we take this very seriously, um, but we also take very seriously the talk, the talk that comes after, right? And so we have a story that we want to start with, and it's going to really help us get into the picture, you know, of what we're really talking about when we say break that wall. So go ahead. Who's our first storyteller today? Oh, okay. I'll be the first one. All right. Thank you so much. Um, my story is, is that I have learned and through surviving the life journey, I have learned that that wall and that open door that we have is within. It starts within. My story is that I have learned that there is a plethora, there are a plethora of outside resources, which is a beautiful thing. However, I, I have learned throughout the experiences that there is perfection within our imperfection. And I have learned that it is beautiful. It is so beautiful to, to embrace and engage the imperfections of our humanness what we need to do, and I ask us to, is to now use the same amount of power and energy in, in entertaining and embracing our perfection. Mm -hmm. When we, I have learned my journey, one, uh, the, the experience has taught me that people for me are my reflection. People in my life are sharing with me what, what I may need to work on or what I may not have or or just need to recover. For me, I needed to recover that yes, I am. I am just as well as I am human, I am divine. Because this situation taught me one, I'm a thriver. I'm I'm a thriver. We all are. For me, it's taught me that as I step into that other component of who I am, that perfect that beautiful divinity, then what I become more humble and automatically, automatically those boundaries that we say that we should set, they're, they're organically going to be set because I believe that what we need to do and what has taught me is that we need to tap into, step in and then elevate that tap in and tap into who we are, not just the human part, not just the imperfection part. We need to step into that perfection part. I am perfected. I am. So when I see those imperfections, it's like, I still love you, girl, because you know what? Now I can tap. I know there's another part of me that I can tap into and say, you know what? There's that other all perfection, the one that has all the answers. So the experience that I experienced is that for me, that that life journey at that particular time taught me one heck of a lesson. And that is, you know what? You all right, girl. You know what? You got it going on. You know what? You you thrived in this thing. You know what? You are a survivor. You know what? You are the goddess that's within you. You know what? You are all that and a bag of chips. <laughs> that's what I learned, ladies. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. And you know what? We are that. We are that. Everything and a bag of chips. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Davina, we would love for you to share your story. Absolutely. Oh, my God. I'm so honored to be here amongst these beautiful ladies. When I first joined One is of Wisdom, this was one of the very first um, topics that I saw um, Mara done 
break the wall. So to come on here a year later, kudos. I appreciate everything that you're doing. And definitely what Dr. Anita is saying that you have to recognize that. And I will, I'm going to piggyback off of that. And what I learned from myself and my own personal experiences is what Dr. Anita said is people are our reflections, right? And so you find that you have developed patterns over your life and you end up in these different types of relationships. We talk about domestic. That means not necessarily always um, spousal. Domestic means domicile in the house. So I found that, okay, maybe I ended up in some type of domestic, not maybe physical, but emotional, mental um, relationships that weren't that weren't beneficial, that were toxic, but were again reflections of myself, what I had attracted. And where did that come from? How where did that how did that begin? And it began in the house. It began as a child, you know, maybe the child is um the one that's the short one, the one that everything is taken out on, the one that's pushed over in the corner, the one that's maybe not always celebrated, the one that is kind of loved but is in a frustrating situation, the one that may have been adjacent to physical or mental. I mean, physical is easy, you know, you can identify that. And it's like, you know, how do you stay in an abusive relationship with a person that's hitting you? Well, it's not always that they're hitting you with physical, but it could be emotional blows that are scars that begin um, early on in life. It begins um, even, and it doesn't always have to be in the house either. It could be at school, bullying, all of those things and not being able to have a voice and speak up and, and, and that becomes your identity over time. So, yeah, you could say, oh, well, how did I end up in this relationship? Well, over time, you didn't you didn't feel like you were that bag of chips and all of that. Or you did, but it wasn't recognized. And so now you kind of stuff that down and you become and fall into this role of who you have to be for other people instead of yourself. And so that's definitely something I it, from one year ago to now, am able to start to see that for myself, like, okay, I see these different patterns over my life that have been so reflective, so maybe not that non-productive as I shed and go through and evolution and evolve and realize my strength, my power, that I'm born a born a sparkle. It's somewhere up there. Yeah. But <laughs> but and, and being in this, and not then we're not alone. And being in this circle with our our, our wonderful one is the wisdom and G100 and all of our, our ladies here. And I just, I, I thank you. I love you. And I just wish that I could really keep encouraging. And But I love that we're encouraging and inspiring in each other. That's right. Thank you so much, Davinia. I totally agree. You know, like we were talking about Dr. Anita, she said, we are that, you know, we're everything in a bag of chip, but there are times that you don't feel that way, right? And and how do we really find that strength? And I would love to hear, um, I know that you all have your different stories. If you'd like to share, when do you step up? You know, how do you step up? Because you can definitely get very lost inside, you know, especially when something like this is going on. And I always tell people, don't forget, you're not buried because you're a seed. The deeper the seed is buried, the stronger the roots. So, you know, sometimes we feel that we're lost, but we're just being, we're just being honed to grow and have strong roots. So, you know, this, this space is exactly that. So I would love for one of you to just step up and share your story at this moment. Can I, so can I, I would love to, oh, oh, go ahead. If Enolia, you can go further now. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'll I would love to. I, I would love to share this story. And the first thing that I learned is that we all want love and we all deserve love, but not not just love, unconditional love. And I share this with the conviction of understanding that most of us that have incurred or have um, uh, received abuse, 
have had conditional love. You know, this is what we love, know love to be. It, it comes with a uh, verbal, you know, hitting. It comes with uh, physical, you know, uh, aggression. And, you know, just sharing my story, we all as young people are coming out of school, we're, we're going out on our own, coming, going into college and we want love and we have a new life and we want to get started and we, we meet that first love. And we have no idea what to expect or how to explore that love. We just go with our kind of eyes wide open, but still blind because we've never in, in, in experienced this before. And um, in being with that first love, and then all of a sudden this aggression comes, there is an embarrassment and there is a shame because here I am growing up with a family saying, I would never incur this. I'm too strong for this. I'm too this. I'm too that. I, I got this, right? But then you look up and you're in the situation and you go, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. But it's not just how did I get here? It's like, how did this happen to me? I'm the one with the strength. I'm the one that people looked at that basically said, oh, she, she's got life. I don't have to worry about her. But here I am in a relationship that is abusive. So I share and I, I say this with all of my conviction, I had to look up what victimhood meant. And one of the definitions of being a victim is that a person has come to feel helpless and passive in the face of misfortune or ill treatment. And that part that says feel helpless or is passive. And I found that whenever I extended to stand in my authenticity and express my voice to say, no, 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 this can't happen with me, the aggression came more. So what I learned is that a moment of strength is everything. And that moment of strength doesn't necessarily have to come in the face of the adversity more than that moment of strength has to come when you can change your circumstance, when you can take that leap of faith, trust yourself and know that this needs to go behind you. This is not serving you. This love, as it comes under the auspices, well, I love you, isn't the love that is serving me or nurturing me or assisting me. And that I deserve love unconditionally. That doesn't have the conditions of, I hit you and then it's like, oh, well, I really didn't mean it, I love you. So in understanding that it was that moment to exit, it was that moment of strength that I found within that had to make the plans and figure it out and exit and that I could not be embarrassed about this, that I couldn't be embarrassed in and not be able to ask for help. So what I learned is that no matter what mistake that I may have made in the direction I'm going that I didn't realize this is the situation and it unveils itself to me, that I never have to be embarrassed about unveiling the truth and exiting and changing the direction and demanding the love that I know is nurturing, is unconditional and is deserving. Never be embarrassed. And always, always, always trust yourself. There's a divinity there and it helps you navigate through the story and change the circumstance. Wow, wow, how powerful. You know, I, I, I hear you and in my coaching years, I've, I've heard this again and again, and I, the embarrassment to, to let people know that for one moment I needed help when I, I didn't recognize what was happening. I thought that I knew everything. Um, and, and they're so embarrassed to ask for help. And there, there's never, I say that's the star skill. Our star skill in life is to ask for help. Knowing when to step up and say, wow, I always tell my daughters 20 seconds of insane courage, 
20 seconds. If you're super scared, 20 seconds and just do it. Get out, talk, do something. And I, I want to thank you because what you just gave us, a moment of strength is everything. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I know, beautiful. Sanja. <laughs> yes, my, uh, my contribution to this discussion would be, uh, ladies, that you know, this silent emotion trauma may not necessarily be from your partners and only. For me, when I talk about my story, it was more from the in-law side. You know, um, coming from India, uh, once we are married, uh, the girl is, uh, you know, taught right from the uh, childhood that we belong to the husband's family. And after marriage, you do not have any relationship with your parents. Uh, you know, so th that's a tragedy. Uh, but as a child, I was very sensitive and an introvert child. Um, uh, I, I think that was why I was difficult. My parents, uh, my uh, uh, me and my sister, my father especially, uh, was very adamant uh, because he, um, uh, you know, when he got married to my mother, much against his family's wishes, because India, again, uh, you know, has a lot of arranged marriages and I also had an arranged one. Um, so when my mom gave birth to two, uh, you know, girl children, she was taunted, she had, uh, she was boycotted from the society, the, from the family, she had faced a lot. So I grew up seeing all these uh, challenges in my family with my mother, but my mother was a very strong willed woman. And so was my father supporting her. And one thing that, uh, you know, put, uh, that was put in me and my sister's uh, head very strongly was that you have to stand up on your feet fighting for your uh, you know rights always uh, somewhere when I met my prince charming uh, uh, everything was all all good you know it was again an arranged marriage everything was all good but when uh, uh, the uh, you know in-laws angle came into picture we just realize that it's much more to accept than just the reality of love, right? Uh, because it's no more your parents' love uh, who, who always care for you, who are always there behind you. It's much more than giving rather than now accepting or receiving, right? And we women always believe that there, you know, things will change. Uh, we are always hopeful. And this hope, one of the most, I would say, the positive attribute of life, uh, sadly, but this very hope can become bondages. You know, I say that we should not have hope to such an extent that we fail to see the underneath buried explosive reality of any situation. In my case, um, my sister-in-law and, uh, you know, mother-in-law, they were very, uh, very possessive of my husband. They loved him, but they failed to understand that I am also present in his life. Uh, there was a lot of jealousy, comparisons, uh, me uh, with the sister-in-law, and there is always, uh, uh, you know, there's always uh, a difference between a daughter and a daughter-in-law. The acceptance is never 100%. Um, how much ever you do, it's never enough. And I still chose to keep quiet. I chose silence because I just wanted no fights. But interference increased so, uh, uh, you know, uh, deeply um, that there was fights every day. There was misunderstanding, miscommunications. And after seven months of a marriage, when I conceived and um, I was very happy, right, uh, we went to the doctor uh, because it was very uh, unbearable pain. And to my horror, I was told that there was no fetus in the first place and there was just a chunk of flesh. You know, um, so my mother-in-law taunted me indirectly. There was uh, very sadly, when any such situation happens, your own clan, the women in the society, instead of standing by you, you know, for you, they are the ones who pull you down, unfortunately. And I was boycotted uh, because I had three miscarriages and I was finding it very difficult to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. conceive, give birth. I was uh, called by names. Uh, how much ever you have your loving partner with you supporting you, the pressure is more from his, uh, you know, the, the in-law side and the family members from, again, your in-laws, because it's their reputation. A girl is brought into the family and she's not able to conceive. There is a problem with the girl. 
and it is a belief of strong belief that men are born fertile right <laughs> women are always the one to be blamed right so even if uh, uh, you know and just to convey that you know it is okay to go for a test and get it you know tested it it is just all right it was a normal uh, procedure but it took such a huge cry because for a man to go under a test it was an insult to the family right the lineage was on stake at stake right and i fought for it luckily my husband um uh you know was a little understanding he uh, tried to uh, pacify and you know uh, calm his uh, parents down uh, but you know the dnc the the uterus uh, cleaning after the um, uh, you know the miscarriage was not done properly and i barely could walk one of the uh, miscarriages and so much so that i instead of just 3 days of rest even after a week rest i could not walk my uh, Uh, husband and uh, father-in-law used to go out uh, for uh, you know in the morning and very sweetly my uh, uh, you know mother-in-law used to uh, uh, just talk to me very sh- sugar coated words and she used to go out um, to meet her friends telling uh, you know the le- the maid uh, to just leave so that all the chores uh, was to be done by me i could barely walk i had the infection internal infection i bled again uh, nothing was helping that was when i chose to move out and after uh, you know uh, when i was staying uh, they used to just call up continuously to talk or to my husband and telling him that you know you have to make your wife understand it's her fault so the blame game always starts right uh, so it is not always uh you know the picture what a wife thinks because most of the time the husband doesn't even know what's happening behind the scene it is always a pressure from uh, the family's end right so the communication plays a very important role in any relationship you have to uh, you know voice your opinion even if it is just love you cannot sacrifice to uh, or go down to that level that you know you are taking the pain because sitting in pain will not help any woman right and that's what i i did because i had faced uh, you know there was a situation where uh, all the women um, they have just boycotted me uh, from a, a gathering and they said because you are not able to give birth just leave just leave uh, the gathering i had to face uh, insult leave the uh, you know i i went back home so much so because i was so much into depression that uh, i decided to end up my life and uh, luckily when you know that moment I, god had different plans right it's never what we uh, choose so uh, luckily when my mother gave me a call that moment and she said no right uh, uh, we are always there and they're always there uh, you know fighting for us to make us understand that no you are not ending your life because these people have to learn, you know you have to teach them a lesson because if not you who will be an example to the society there are many other girls who have to you know bring uh, the situation into light and fight for their rights and you because you are uh, you know you 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 represent me my mother tells me that you represent me you are my reflection and you have to fight for your right and you know a very beautifully uh, when i was um, uh, blessed with a daughter and uh, again uh, you know my health ch- uh, chart has always been uh, confusing so my uh, not just me but my in-laws had a very different treatment to my uh, daughter as well she was not uh, because i was again admitted because of my uh, uh, you know ill, uh, ill health um, she, i was hospitalized for about uh, 15 days or so she was starved she was made under you know a lot of uh, you know, things put in her mind that against my mother me uh, the society and when i met my daughter after uh, 15 days i was horrified to see this pale fragile little child she was 5 years old and that moment i decided that no this is the turning point in my life i knew i had to stand up for my baby and this time i will not choose silence since my in-laws 
were very influential. I did not have any proof against them. I chose to speak out and become voice for many women and to just let them know that silence is not the solution. Understand that it's like rotten soul eating parasites have to be faced with courage. And every girl has to be taught this, right? And you have to choose your likes and dislikes, remove yourself from these social stigma and fight for your emotional happiness. You have the right, the right of being happy. It should be on your terms. And the only thing that I, you know, learn from my uh, uh, the domestic violence uh, phase, I would say, is that it is not because of my fears that I chose uh, silence, but because of my mindset. So you have to change the thinking process. You have to learn to just say no, enough. Every girl should be taught, you know, that they are the change. They have to fight and believe that only if, you know, you 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 need to feel uh, the necessity of life, the essence of life, and the violence will come from within. If uh, the I mean the fight uh, for violence against violence will come from within, and you have to be that voice. So I think uh, yes, every girl needs to be taught to say no, which is very essential. That's my story. Wow. Uh, we we, we want to send you hugs, you know, um, and, and we're all here with you. And truly what, um, you know, I said a little while ago, a moment of strength is everything. I think the moment you chose life, you know, maybe your mom called you in that moment, but you have become a beacon of hope for a lot of women. And I love when you say hope should never cover up something that is not right right so um eventually you found that voice and we're we're so much bigger for that because you are now here with us helping us bring this message right and how we break that wall and it's very hard when it's within communities and culture you know we have to be so respectful because you know we we don't really know what's going on but um i send you a big hug and i know mar wanted to say something so yes Yes, uh, thank you so much, ladies. And, and allow me to, to disagree, please. Uh, when you say uh, silence is not an option, well, when we are talking about domestic violence, there is a matter of, of strategy, I would say. And there are stages, and there are sometimes silence is part of that stage of resilience. This is protection that will allow you to be strong enough to, to, and give a voice to you to fight back. Silence could be a resource, resource for those women that are trapped in that world, waiting for a way out. And sometimes that is silence through years and years. And that is to build resilience. And, and you know, black and white is for garment. It's not for, for, for life. For life, there are not yeah, you have to choose yours particularly and adapt to your situation. And when you are arising, it's what we addressing is what means psychological impact. So when the, 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 the impact is psychological and not only about physical, or just only about psychological, it's very important what you do with your own before <laughs> you to search for the help. That is my, my, my opinion. I don't know if you if you share with me and you think it's the same. Um we we assume that silence means nothing, but sometimes silence speaks volumes. Okay? And it's when you choose to interject that silence. Because when people are aggressive, they're looking for an equal aggressive reaction. And sometimes when you allow that aggression to just go in its energy, in its way, and you're silent, you're speaking volumes. Yeah. You're saying everything without having to say a word. Yeah. So I, I would have to say that it depends on the situation also. And then, you know, exerting that power, you know, of silence can be even more powerful than making the statement, depending on the situation. Okay, I'm gonna jump in. Yeah, go ahead, jump in, Deborah. Jump in. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you, Nella. Thank you so much. 
this is my first time sharing and I appreciate the oneness and wellness um, of Dr. Anita under her leadership to come out and talk about my story. Um, I relate to everything that you guys are saying about the embarrassment, about hiding. Um, I hid because I didn't want to hurt other people. There were so many other people involved in my situation and I hid from it because it would be dramatic to uh, express my feelings or to tell my stories. But now coming out, um, the, the physical pain, the numbness, the pain of forgiveness was the hardest thing for me to do. Um, after the last incident, I said, enough. Um, there were times working in corporate America, and I know it'll help a lot of women who are working and hiding it um, every day, going to work. And then certain days you have to put so much makeup on because you're trying to cover yourself, cover the black eyes, cover the, the busted lips, cover everything so you won't reveal what's happening in your real life. Um, and that was me. And I hope it helps people to come out and tell your story because there is someone in that office that's going through the same thing that you're going in and try to stop hiding it. Um, every time that the incident would happen, I would look in a mirror. And it, when I look in a mirror and look at the bruises, it was a reflection of me. So it was time for me to say, OK, enough is enough. Until the last time when I was in the hospital, um, I was pinned down or well, he pinned me down on the floor. And yes, he was my princess at first, pinned down on the floor. And I had a state trooper, I mean, pinned down on the floor and had to go to the hospital. But the embarrassment was I had all the nurses and different uh, psychiatrists, social workers, everyone coming in. And it made you feel like you you did something wrong even though they were coming there to help you but your mental state is so far gone where you still think that you're doing something you did something wrong um and a state trooper came in and he said you know what this is the last time this is going to happen to you he said i just came back from um a situation where the guy killed the wife and all the kids he said you could press charges on me all you want but i'm going to take them and he took them to jail he went there and he grabbed him and he took him to jail. And that was my awakening because I had to have someone else to tell me that you are you are being abused because I didn't believe it. Like I said, I was numb to the situation, but I had to have someone else tell me that you're being abused. Even uh, looking at the reflection in the mirror of all the bruises, I still didn't get it because I didn't think it. I thought I was supposed to help him because he had the issue. But now that I and this has been 30 years ago. 30 years ago, and I'm now revealing it. Now I'm living my best life. Um, of course, I attracted it to more twice in my life, even to the point where someone wanted to kill me. But now going after going to a therapist, she told me what my problem was. I didn't have a father in my life. My mother didn't show that much love. So now I understand where that attractiveness came from, why I was attracting those type of people. But now mm -mm, you can't do that to me anymore. And that when you say no, that means no, it's not going to happen to me anymore. So I'm hoping I'm helping someone and sharing this because, like I said, this is my first time doing it. My family is texting me saying, tell your story. So I thank you guys for allowing me to share. Well, well thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for, for, for sharing that and to have the courage to, to write a voice. Not, not everyone have that courage. And, uh, you yeah. know, even if I say that the silence is, could be powerful, even that we need courage women like you because you are going to be the model, not the one to keep in silence. You are going to be the model for others. And, and as we say, we always say the same, if we reach one woman that we open her eyes, we will say, done, it's done. You know? That is our, our aim. Thank you, Deborah. It's magnificent. And also for you, sorry, Virginia, I, I also, Deborah, you, 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 Traspass the screen, no, and I and I feel your your seri serenity, no. So so you get different stages to the point that you are serene. So you can talk about the past with a smile because you say yes, I did it, you know. Yeah. And, and that's why and that's why I had to make you make you smile because sometimes what happened is that the woman said this is really a wall because even if he died, no, I would continue remember that time and and they, they have killed her emotionally on her faith on her spirituality on trusting on others so they kill her they kill her you know 
he died, but they killed her. So that is why it's so important that, that, that the woman could smile. And to smile in the future, you need to start working from now, even inside the world. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Mari. Um, I don't know of any, any of you, but I, I was able to capture from all your conversations, starting with Dr. Anita, when you really have to appreciate and love yourself. And, and it takes time and effort, you know, mm -hmm. to really, it's not easy. And especially when you have been deposited or somebody telling you out of love that you're not strong enough or that you're not good enough, you know, because they, they think they're being honest with you. And, you know, that's definitely gaslighting, but you know, to really think that you're everything and that you're even a bag of, you know, everything on a bag of chips, it, it does take that strength, you know? And, and so I want to commend every single person that eventually steps out of it because it's very hard. And we've heard in all these stories today, um, domestic violence is not only about spousal abuse, you know, Davina said, and, and we just heard it with Asanja's story. You know, it, it wasn't about her husband. It was about everything else, including, you know, the way you're brought up and everything, you know, the, so it, it just takes a moment of strength, like, you know, Leah told us, you know, that you say, no, I'm done with this, but it takes so much to get to that point. And I would love to just, just, I want to say something yes. to Deborah too, especially with that whole corporate scene, because I was in corporate for 20 plus years and she is so right. And I, I want, I just want to share just a little bit of a story that yes. I was getting my hair done and I was sitting there and I was talking to a dear friend of mine who had just gotten married and she confided in me and she basically said to me, you know what? I just got married, but I haven't had the courage or the strength to say this to anyone. And he's abusive. Mm -hmm. And it all started showing within that first month. And I was like, get out of the marriage. And she was like, but I'm so embarrassed because I just had this big, large wedding and all of these people gave us gifts. I was like, please, it does not matter what anyone thinks. You do not go to sleep with all of those other people. You do not wake up to all of those other people. That's right. What those other people feel or say or think doesn't matter. And if they're your friends, they're gonna understand and say, thank God you caught it now. I said, are you going to wake up 20 years, 10 years, five years from now? having gone through, you know where this path is leading? No, what support can I give you to hold your hand through this process? And she got out of it. And that I want to emphasize, I want to emphasize, you are so right, Deborah. We come in with this facade of wanting everyone to think that our lives are perfect and everything is good and nobody could ever, ever hear that we're doing poorly. And why do we have this facade? What is it that impresses upon us? This facade of saying we have to be perfect in the eyes of everybody else, that we can't have a dysfunction or a drama going on in our lives. Because we are external driven society. We are an external driven data yeah. society. What is on the outside is so important. And one thing I noticed with each and every one of us, that epiphany came, whether we said it in different ways, the epiphany came is when we realized, hey, this is me. I'm me, that I'm no longer, I am loving me. Because when we, and, and loving yourself is not, is, is, is not, um, uh, um, what's that word? It's, it's not uh, being okay. a, a, yeah, a egotistical or anything like that. Loving, to, to love is so, it's so humble to know that there's something greater within ourselves that I'm not alone. That is that can put you on your knees to say, mm, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Loving ourselves is when we that is that point when you say that is enough. It is in and, and what it re, what it reminds me of, I thought of the first thing I thought of was let there be peace and let it be begin with me. Let there be love for me, and it begins with me. My mother has shared with me one time when my daughters, uh, they were babies. They were babies because I have twins. And she sat me on the bed and she said, Well, Angel, you know, you have got to love yourself first before you love anything. And I shared with her then I said, Mama, I said, I think that's the most selfish thing that you could say. And I walked out of the room. It wasn't until my daughters were young adults that I realized what she said. And when I think of that, let there be peace, then I think of 
take Tina Turner and Ike, Ike and Tina Turner. When did she step out of there? When she started going in her, within herself. Now she chose Buddhism, but girlfriend went inside herself and started appreciating. That's she right. started telling him, you can go to this and that and that and the other. So that strength, I, I, I just want to say that the strength, the strength begins with the love for ourselves. And I'm not talking about that egotistical love. I'm talking about that gentle, nurturing, nourishing love that we give ourselves that there is no, that I am worthy of the best. And if I am worthy, I'm energy now. And if I'm worthy of the best, then I'm not going to bring that other, uh, that, that vibration because only one energy. So on different scales and different degree. So if I'm resonating at a higher vibration, that's the higher vibration that's going to come into my world because I am the influence of my sphere as we all are. So I just wanted to share that it, it's, it's the, it's the love tapping into and reaching into that love that we already have. We yeah. already. Anita, thank you so much for sharing that because I think that is sometimes is the hardest part is to love you because you've been told, you know, for so many years that, it's the outside that really matters. It's how you look, it's who you know, it's how you work, where you work, what you wear, how, you know, it, it's it's all of that. And we forget that that really matters and it may sound cliche, but it really isn't, is what is, is your essence, is who you really are. And the moment that we realize that I don't have to be like Anolia, I can celebrate her because she's wonderful and I don't have to be her and I don't have to be Dr. Anita. I don't have to be a doctor because that was something that she wanted to do, but I'm not less because I didn't become, you know, I'm not that, you know? And so I think that the moment that we realize that we all have purpose and maybe something, you know, it's big for me because it's my contribution to the world. I always tell young ladies when, when I have to, you know, I, I have an empowerment class for young girls between the age of nine and 15. And I say, there's a contribution in you. And it's different. And if God wanted you to be like everybody else, our finger, you know, like our our print would be exactly the same. He would make 30 a bunch, you know, it would be so much easier. But he made us all different. And the moment that she understands that there's something different about her, it means that her contribution is different. And that she has to protect the person that has that contribution. That's your treasure. What all of us bring is something different. So it, it starts from when we're very young, but we can recapture that as we grow older. And But it's hard. I want to say all of you now that are saying, I want to love myself, I just don't know how. You know what? Hang on to a group of women that will be there for you, um, for a good friend. You know, sometimes we don't really even have friends. We have 30 people around us, and that one person is really there for us. But you know what? This is a group right now that is here. We, you know, if you, if you inbox us, if you're feeling alone, if there's something that you need, I want to say we are here. This is just not for show. We are women that have gone through and we have survived and we want to thrive, but we want to share what, you know, how we thrive with you. And it's going to be individual. You don't have to do it the way I did, the way Nolia did it, or the, the way Deborah. But the thing is that there's somebody that did it the way that Sanja did, you know, you live in a home and you think you're going to be happy forever. And it doesn't happen that way. It doesn't happen that way. And it's okay. And it should not be embarrassing. So we want you to know that we're an inbox away. And if we don't know what to do, we will find who can help. Right? So we're all in this, right? Yeah. 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 That you are worthy, that you are worth every effort. And that it, it takes everything, but you, you know, to look in the mirror and to love what you see and just to, again, highlight what, what uh, Dr. Anita had just said, which is, you know, we have to, it, it starts with self. It starts with self and it stops with me. And I will. Yeah. So beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you all. Um, uh, Mari wanted to say something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, yeah. We always say connect, exchange, and learn. This is, this is the, the, the main principle of global networking of Chi Hendrit. And we are aware 
that is not easy for a woman that is inside the wall, the wall of violence. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not easy to connect with others. So if you are inside the wall, connect with yourself without losing your spirituality, your strength, your will to move forward. Exchange, exchange with yourself. You cannot do it with others. Exchange, what, what do you want to do? You, you can do that in that very specific 20% uh, that we established that you can do for yourself and learn, learn from there alone, learning alone, because that it will, will help you to move forward and trespass that wall that is not a wall, it's just a wall today. It will not be for tomorrow. <laughs> Thank, yeah. right. Thank you, Mar. I, I'm going to like ask for last comments. That was Mar's, um, you know, last comment. So, Dr. Anita, before we leave. Oh, I just want to say that, um, you know, you're beautiful. You know, you're beautiful inside and out. Just like Mar said, you know, go, you know, take the moment to go within. Nobody can take anything from your mind. Nobody, if you can see yourself on a beach because it, again, energy, thought, thought goes, energy flows where thought goes. See yourself on that beach. To, you know, you can remove yourself from the situation simply by your thought and nobody, nobody can take that away from you because nobody has to know what you're thinking. So just, know, you know, you, 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 you're deserving of the best. And if you're in the situation, just take, you know, sit in that chair and just start closing your eyes and start seeing, just seeing where you are. And I guarantee you it's going to start changing things because you're going to shift that vibration. I love you. I adore you. And peace be with you. Thank you so much, Akranita. Deborah. Oh, wow. Um, understanding that you are important. Don't be afraid to look in the mirror. You should look in a mirror while, without trying to fix your glasses, finding bumps, finding wrinkles. Uh, look in a mirror and appreciate who you are because you are a reflection of what you see. So look in the mirror. Also say your affirmations. They are so key to me in the morning and the meditation with Dr. Anita, that starts my morning out. Become you. Stop thinking about what everyone is saying about you. Because that's non avoid because they're going to talk, they're going to throw dirt on top of you when you're here, and they're going to throw dirt on top of you when you die. So be you, look in the mirror, love you. And the only person that's going to give you that type of love is your higher power. So that's seek right. that. That's All right. right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I brought Sanja. And I hope I'm saying your name right. What's the what's yeah, Sanjana. Yes. Okay, thank yes. You. So, um, well, I want to just say that uh, we women are all gifted with strength to overcome any challenges in life, right? But um, if only we recognize our drawbacks, our biggest enemy, that is our mind. And every situation is different, right? Every person is different. So every severity of violence is also different. The only constant thing that every woman should know is saying no from the very beginning of any relationship. If we do not learn to say no enough, every violent episode will tighten its grip and bind us forever. We then get used to it. Our mind learns to become victim of our fears. We let it happen in hope maybe they will change. It was, it's not going to happen right? What will happen is we need to change and we need to help all our sisters to wake up, help them, uh, you know, um, say no, teach them to say no to these bondages and say no to domestic violence and embrace your freedom today. So my message is wake up all sisters. Thank you. Wake up, sisters. Wake up to your love. Wake up to who yes. you are and wake up that you have the right to say, no, no. this is not for me. So thank you so much, Sanja. Thank you so much. Hey, Enolia. So I want to say two things, which is one, you are never alone. You have the divine within you. It's that place where you go to pray. It's that place where you go to consult inside. You are never alone. And number two, you are powerful. You are powerful. Don't look for the power outside of yourself. Trust yourself, 
Trust the strength. Trust that you have the strength to take that first step. Trust the fact that you have the strength to take that first leap. Take everything that's been said here. Understand your worth. Know that you are beautiful. Know that you deserve love. And know that you are powerful. And remember, it only takes a moment. It takes a moment to walk out the door and you're gone. It takes a moment to change the circumstance, whether that's the power through your silence or the power through your authenticity in stating your voice. Trust yourself and know that you are powerful and you can find the strength and the courage within you to shift and change your circumstance. It starts with you. Hold a vision, hold a vision in your life of that success and walk to it. That's right. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just have to say it's been an incredible hour. Oh, my God. I could go hours and hours just talking to all of you. But to be respectful of everybody's time, I just want to thank every single one of you for giving us your story, giving us what you've learned. And I have to say that that's being brave. And we're all brave. Literally, we were born with it. It's innate in every single one of us. It's usually just buried. We forget that we have that in us. It's, you know, we're equipped to just have that moment of courage and, and, and do it. And it's there. We just have to find it. But I just want you to know the moment that you're brave, you inspire other women to be brave. You know, so sometimes it's so hard for us to think about me. But you know what? Don't think about you. Maybe this is not the moment. Maybe you have to think, oh, my gosh, my niece is looking at me. My daughter is looking at me. My son is looking at me. This is my moment, you know. So, so you know, I, I know it could be hard, but it can be done, and we can break that wall. So, you know, I'm going to just end up saying no is no. Let me see. It's right there. We always do this, and we say no. So definitely no. You know, we, we can do this and say yes to the life you deserve. We all deserve great life. So I would say, yeah, let's put our hands out there. Write it if you have it. You know, there we go. No. And we're breaking don't that wall. Don't, Thank don't, you all. Out. don't miss out next session in March. Next month, second session. Yes. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Peace. Peace for all. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.